in order to discover exciting exoplanets and in order to understand what's happening on them, today most scientists try to focus on studying atmospheres. Because obviously the atmosphere is crucial for potential life or habitability. But since many of these planets are super far away, currently there are not a lot of techniques we can use to try to understand what's happening here. The most common way involves the star, and specifically the starlight, passing through the atmosphere and observing certain frequencies due to the atoms in the atmosphere, but this just tells us about what's here, not how much and not what it does. Yet in the last decade, the scientists started to discover more techniques, with some even focusing on what we see on Venus and then trying to interpret this as something that could be happening in a different star system. And interestingly, just over a decade ago, back in 2011, for the first time ever, the researchers detected a phenomenon that's only been previously seen on planet Earth. Now, it's a little bit difficult to see it here, but in essence, it's a phenomenon that looks like this on Earth. It's known as a glory. And so a very similar phenomenon was discovered on Venus, that's visible here on the left, compared to the phenomenon from Earth on the right. Although in this case, this is not an actual image, this is a simulation, to highlight how they're not exactly the same. The actual image is right here although this is actually visible only in the UV light. And so in essence, glories are kind of similar to, I guess, rainbows. It consists of a lot of concentric, successfully dimmer rings with different colors. On Earth, it's usually red on the outside and blue toward the center, but it's obviously going to be different on Venus. But this is not a rainbow. A rainbow usually forms when the sunlight passes through some kind of a medium that has certain density but it goes into a different medium with different density, thus creating a refraction similar to a lens. In most cases on Earth, this is air to water. In contrast, a typical glory seems to form when the light passes between extremely tiny droplets, in for example clouds or fog, with the light in this case experiencing diffraction and not refraction, as what you essentially see right here, when we have two tiny holes forming a diffraction pattern. So it's a slightly different effect, but does seem to produce somewhat similar observations. And so approximately a decade ago, this phenomenon was discovered on Venus. And that meant one thing. It meant that there is something in the atmosphere on Venus that's able to do this just like on Earth. And though for us on Earth, it's obviously once again water droplets, Something else on Venus was diffracting the light, producing these interference patterns, which actually can also be imagined this way. This one is made with a laser. But in this case, the laser light is passing through a tiny hole, forming a ring-like diffraction. And so it turned out to be, most likely, sulfuric acid. Tiny droplets of sulfuric acid were forming this on Venus as well. But because they're different in size compared to water on Earth, approximately 1.2 micrometers across, they were obviously producing slightly different effects. But most importantly, they had to be uniform in size and they had to be in a large enough volume of space, which is how this was visible. It kind of suggests that on Venus, sulfuric acid droplets seem to basically create similar effects to water droplets on Earth. And these particles always have to be spherical, relatively small, and liquid. So tiny droplets, but in this case, acid, not water. But that was over 12 years ago. Now we have something a little bit more exciting from a much farther away and a much stranger planet. Actually, a pretty well-known exoplanet, WASP-76b, discovered in 2013. And this planet is pretty extreme. It orbits its star every 1.8 days and as a result is extremely hot. 1900 Celsius, 3400 Fahrenheit. Although that's average the day side is much hotter. But because it's so close to its star and because it's been investigated for so many years, we do have a lot of data about its composition and its overall atmosphere. For example, there seems to be evidence of titanium oxide and even small amounts of water, as well as lithium, sodium, magnesium, calcium, manganese, potassium, and iron, with all of this very likely just being in the atmosphere as a kind of a vapor. It was also that one planet where the researchers suggested that it probably has some kind of an iron rain. And this might even happen right in the twilight area, or basically right here between the hot side and the slightly cooler side, where the droplets of iron start to condense 
and turn into liquid, forming a kind of an iron ring that lands on the surface. And that's because the temperature between the day side and the night side is extremely similar to the condensation temperature of iron. And so despite this planet being 640 light years away from us, all of this was quite definitive and visible with modern telescopes, and that by itself is really impressive. But these discoveries were from years ago, now we have something new. As you might have guessed by now, by looking at this planet again and looking at new data, the researchers noticed an unusual excess in brightness in one of these twilight areas, specifically this one is known as the Eastern Terminator, the boundary between the day and the night sides. Now this planet is tidally locked, so basically one side is always facing the star and the other side is always in the darkness, so this area doesn't move much, but it does have very unique effects. One obviously being that iron rain, but another one seems to be that glory. The strange increase in brightness that was actually symmetrical resembles something similar observed from Venus back in 2011. And previously this has only been seen on Earth and on Venus, not any other planet. But once again, this does require droplets, spherical droplets of the same size and resembling a liquid. And so on such a hot planet, it possibly confirms that this is iron and these are iron droplets and they also have to be inside the clouds and be constantly replenished by something. In other words, just like on Venus and on Earth, it suggests a relatively permanent atmospheric conditions, although in this case obviously super hot, but at the same time, the actual element is currently unknown. It could be something entirely different and it could actually be a liquid we've never seen before, as in it could be some kind of a unusual alloy that becomes an aerosol in these extremely hot conditions. But since in this case glory can only be formed by relatively constant conditions, which means at least a couple of years of replenishment in the atmosphere, it of course implies that the atmospheric conditions here seem to be pretty permanent, basically confirming that some of these extreme planets can still maintain extreme conditions inside their atmospheres, even if that means that there are thousands of degrees in temperature. But because this is a hot Jupiter, or basically a planet that's very similar to Jupiter, but just much much hotter, it is a much more exotic planet compared to some of the other planets researchers want to study. So obviously not a terrestrial world and not even a super Earth. Nevertheless, by finding glory here and by knowing what to look for, we can now find ways to look for similar effects around other planets as well. And more importantly, we can even use other visual features and visual effects to possibly even start discovering minute reflections from various oceans and lakes that could also produce glory effects from certain angles. And that by itself is what's exciting here. By knowing that this exists and by knowing what to look for, this can now be applied to other planets, including planets in the, for example, TRAPPIST-1 system or the much closer Proxima b that's also in the habitable zone. And so if we find something similar here, now that's going to be super exciting. And that would suddenly give these planets a much higher chance to potentially host life. Once again, these glory effects only form when there are permanent clouds that are able to create these perfectly spherical droplets that have to last for at least a couple of years. And more importantly, usually they imply constant temperatures and constant pressures. Which is of course why both of these are visible on both Venus and Earth, two relatively different terrestrial planets with relatively stable atmospheres. And so in the next few years, researchers might finally have different ways to look for these unique visual phenomena that can actually indicate something super exciting on surfaces of exoplanets, different types of water, permanent atmospheres, and maybe a chance of life. And that actually might be the next focus for a lot of exoplanetary studies, trying to identify various optical phenomena that we know from planet Earth and we've observed on planets like Venus and possibly even Mars that has a very thin atmosphere. Many have been detected in the last few years, with many caused by different things. And since we can't actually identify tiny lakes or even large oceans on these planets, the only way we can see them is if they basically somehow interact with the starlight by reflecting it in a certain way. And so we're maybe entering a new era of discoveries on various exoplanets. And so honestly, I can't wait until we see some kind of a distant reflection from an exoplanetary ocean. But until those new discoveries and until we find something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, 
Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.